Today we're going to learn how to use the loop element. Let's get started. Okay, we have the stock application and the products table. It has four fields, name, which is a text type, price, which is a number type, stock, also a number type, and description, which is a multi-line text. If we go to pages, we'll see the page associated with products that says slash products. So it has the same name as a table, and is this page right here. As you can see, it's already loaded. I've got different elements that have different prices, stocks, and descriptions. Let's get back. What we want to do now is show this exact same table in a loop. To achieve this we're going to create a new page, make a new list and we'll call it product list. The path will be slash list and in file name we're going to write list.txx. Let's hit save and then get inside products list with a double click. Nice. Now we search for load from database and we put it under page header. It always goes in the same place. In data we will load the only table we've got which is products and we'll save it in an array that we'll call all products. Then we create a container. This must always be created in the body. A container centers the element. That's why we'll put it on small, so we can have it as centered as possible. Next step, we create a typography, so we can have a handsome looking title. In name, we'll create title and in content we'll write product list. This is the section where we write the content that we'll be showing. Great. We click on typography and we choose H2, which has a decent size. Once all of this is done, we'll create our loop. We locate it at the same height as typography, but inside the container. It should never be inside title, only outside. In variable source, we write all products, because that's the variable we use with all our products. And we change item to, let's say, current product. The next step is to create a list item for each and every product, inside of which we'll add text. Once again inside text, in content, we'll write name, colon, and between braces we're going to write current product. You might be wondering why we do this. We do it because it is the name of the variable that we have in loop. So every product will be called current product. And to this we add dot name because it is the field in which we have the names on. After that we hit save, then build, and we wait until the application build message is shown. Then we go back to the page and refresh. As we can see our products list suddenly appeared and all its text and data is already centered. That will wrap it up for today guys. Hope you enjoyed it and as always, thanks for watching.